Well, I got a very ser <coughs> serious first question. Uh, you were in cleats at practice. Oh yeah. What, what, what's what's that? What's that about? I started wearing cleats when I was a, a GA, and obviously I, can, I was able to move a little bit better when I was <laughs> younger. But I always wanted to just wear cleats because I always wanted the guys to know that I, we're all in this together. So if there's a drill or something that I can demonstrate, to show them how it's supposed to be done. The other day we did a tackling drill, and I was the first one to do the tackling drill and just show them, hey, man, this is what it's supposed to look like. And at the end, they show them how much I care about them, that we're all in this together. Your, your intensity is pretty evident at practice, some of the goal line drills and stuff. I mean, you, you, what, what is that part of your coaching style, I guess, just your energy and your passion, I guess? Uh, you know, where does that come from, and, and how big of a deal is that for you as a coach? I mean, really, I, I just love the game of football. And the game's been so good to me that it's my job to give it back to the game. And obviously, I mean, playing defense, you got to play with a certain mindset. And I want to show my guys what that mindset should look like day in and day out. You mentioned tackling, and obviously to me that's the thing on defense, the better tackling teams are the better defensive teams. How do you teach somebody to be a better tackler? I mean, really, you got to rep it every single day. Um, I showed the quote from Vince Lombardi back in the 40s, and he talked about the best teams or whoever tackles the best and blocks the best wins the game. And then Bill Park Parcell in 2015, have this very similar quote. So the game of football will never change on the defense side of the ball. So it's up to us as coaches to continuously train that every single day and never lose sight of the little things that go into the game of football. Schemes are great, but if we can't tackle, the scheme doesn't mean anything. How much uh, more comfortable do you feel right now in your role with your players than you know a month ago, for that matter? Oh, it's, it's been an unbelievable transition. I, mean, I love my guys, and I'm kind of getting used to the flow of practice. I mean, that first practice, I was just kind of looking around, like, where am I supposed to go to next? And now I'm just getting into a rhythm, and I got a lot of older guys that, that help me out. But it, it all starts with them. I, mean, I care about every single one of them. It's been a blast just to be around them for a short amount of time. It is kind of funny. I mean, I know you're, you're their coach, but has there been a guy in that room that has kind of helped helped you, like, just get acclimated or for things like that? Oh, I mean, really, I mean, I got a lot of older guys, whether that's Shay, Alex, Rod, I mean, I got a lot of older guys in the room, No, he, so those guys have, have helped me out a lot just through this transition, whether it's where we're supposed to be at even in practice and just helping me out in the meeting rooms. I mean, we're all in this together, and it's great to have an older group. Yeah. You mentioned No, he, uh, he's been a corner the last few years. We've seen him, him seeing some time as safety this year. What about him skill set-wise, mentality-wise, makes him ideal as safety? He's, he's such a smooth football player, and he's got great football intelligence probably one of the better ones on our defense. And I think those are really the two biggest things that stick out to him if you're watching him. He's a smooth athlete. He's a very smart player. He's always going to be in, in, in the right spot. So it's awesome to actually have him in my room and kind of give him a role for this year. How do you envision using him? I mean, is he a guy that comes in on dime package? Is he is he potentially a starter, a safety? I mean, how do you plan on using him? No, I, mean, I got a lot of guys in the room, so the competition is high. I look forward to running out versus Georgia Southern and trying to see who, who are those main starter, but he's going to have a role for sure. He's definitely earned it with his play this spring. The field side stuff between Ty and Rodney, uh, how's that kind of shaking out? How's that developed over uh, spring camp? It, really, Rod's been, he's kind of my Swiss Army knife. He's played some nickel for us, some field safety for us, and he's continuing to grow, and Ty just keeps getting better and better every single day. So obviously that battle will really continue as we get along in, in, uh, in fall camp in the summertime. Um, but Ty has doing a, a done an amazing job with the one, so he's got to just keep progressing. I'm very excited for him in the future. You've got five or six guys competing for, for three starting spots, really. I mean, how do you kind of, you know, how do you kind of dole out those those, those, those snaps, and how do you decide? How do you, how is it decided who's going to start those games? Yeah, really, just the snaps. I got to do a great job as a coach, just making sure that the the reps are evened out, just so when we're able to evaluate it as a staff. There's no one was one-sided, didn't have enough reps here, enough reps here. So I got to do a great job rotating those guys in and out. And ultimately, who's going to start is going to be up to Coach D, Coach Chins, and myself. So I, I'm very fortunate with the, the group I got. So I feel like we have, there's no, there's one A and one B in my group at a lot of positions, which you don't see in a lot of college places. Being a new, being a new position coach, I mean, it, it kind of wipes the slate clean, I guess, for those guys in a sense. I mean, so how do you look at past production versus what you're seeing in spring, and, and how does all that way come together? No, oh, absolutely. I looked at the last couple of years of tape for the guys that have played a lot of football here and evaluated them initially, but then, like you said, it's a clean slate when we start spring ball. At the end of the day, it's our job as coaches to put the best product out on the field, and the best players are going to play. 
It's not like it's high school and the seniors get to play. If Ty Benefield is our best player, Ty Benefield is going to play a lot of football. If if no, he's our best player, he's going to play a lot of football. So whoever whoever the best guys is ultimately are going to play is not going to be because someone's been here for so long. He deserves to play. you got to earn it out on the field every day. You, you mentioned Rodney kind of, uh, you know, being able to play multiple positions. Just, you know, when you look at the all the positions he is able to play, what's kind of the advantage of putting him in certain spots as opposed to other? The big, the big one, he just, the reason he's able to play so many different spots is because he's such a smart football player. And I think that's for us being able to put him at different spots just shows to him how well he studies and how well he knows the defense. Uh, it really might not give us a competitive advantage, but it will give him a competitive advantage to be able to play and play a lot of snaps for us because he's able to do so many different things. What's been, uh, what's your initial reaction with Alexander Tuker been? I, I love Tuker, man. He's, uh, I've been fortunate really the last couple of stops. I've always kind of been thrusted someone who's been here for five or, or, or six years and someone that knows the defense inside and out. I've been lucky every place I've been. That older guy has been also a leader of the team. And really my favorite part is just building a relationship with him, showing him how much I care. And really it's my job as a coach to do whatever it takes for him to go out the way he needs to go out in his last year. What, what stands out about the way that he plays? Is it the way he plays or what, what is it? Oh, his effort. He, he plays 100 miles an hour. Like what I see in practice is what I've seen in film while he's been here. And you don't get that at a lot of places from players, especially in this day and age. It's more of a throwback old school type of guy where he goes 100 miles an hour, whether all of us are out there or is it, it's just himself. And it's awesome to see that. In your limited time being around Ty Benefield, what is his ceiling? How, however high it can go. I mean, he's phenomenal. I mean, he's, he's very similar to Tubes in the way he practices, the way he plays. I mean, and sky's the limit for him. He can be as good as he wants. And, it's my job as a coach to get him there, and that's exciting for me as a, his position coach is that he has such a high ceiling, and I need to make sure that he reaches all of his potential while he's here. It got better later in the year, but for a good chunk of the year, you know, the pass defense wasn't great last year. I mean, you said you're watching tape and film and stuff. I don't know if you notice anything or your coaches are talking about stuff, but what, what, what do you, what's the emphasis in the pass defense to try to improve that this year? Really, just some of it's just cleaning up technique, I mean, cleaning up guys' eyes, all, all the little things. I mean making sure we're on the same page as the back end. A lot of the pass defense, whether it's a negative play, might be a coverage bus or guys aren't in proper positions. So just focusing on all those little things and really with me and Coach Warren just being on the same page. I mean, it's been awesome just to work with him as well. I feel like me and him known each other for years and we've only known each other for a couple months, but we got a great chemistry and I think it's also shown with our players as well. And with that, the, the takeaways too, uh, I think it was 19 and 14 games last year. And it sounds like that's been a big emphasis mm -hmm. and you guys did some professional development stuff with takeaways. What, 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 do you, what do you see from your perspective in terms of trying to increase the takeaways on D? I mean, at the end of the day, turnover margins are definitely a big thing that's going to determine whether or not we're going to lose games. And it's something we just had to keep repping and preaching as coaches. I think we've done an awesome job I'm not sure the exact number of takeaways throughout the whole spring, but it's definitely way over 19. So hopefully what we've been doing all spring ball, you know, you hit it in the summertime, hit it in fall camp, and then it can show in the season as well. Zion Washington's a guy who didn't really play any defense until he got here. He still had quite a bit of playing time late last season. Where is he in terms of understanding the position and his football IQ right now? Zion has done an amazing job. Really another guy that can is 1A, 1B, could easily be a starter here. So I was excited just to see his growth. I think he's done a great job from practice one till now, just getting better. He's big, athletic, and fast. So he's going to have a major role for us on defense this year. How would you describe him as a DB? I mean, you mentioned he's big. Is he an enforcer out there? Is he a guy that can match up you know, man to man with, with, with a receiver? I mean, how would you describe him? He's, he's, he can do it all. I mean, he's got to continue to just be consistent. He can cover a slot. He can fill the box and play the run. So he adds a lot of value to us because he can really do both that you're looking for at the safety position. Who do you think of, I mean, just in the defensive back, do see Kai Taylor's one-handed pick today? Oh, yeah, unbelievable. What do you, what do you think of that? How do you make the play? How's, how's Kai doing from what you've seen? Kai, Kai's doing awesome. He keeps developing every single day. The pick was amazing. Obviously, those are things that we naturally just, we're not just teaching, hey, let's go up all the time with one hand. But he did a great job high-pointing the ball. He's an amazing athlete, very quick. Uh, good good instincts, so I'm excited to see him grow as well to be able to help us out this year. You say, you know, you're talking about creating turnovers and things like that, and I know you see on practice going out and get a one-handed pick, but, like, how much of a part of that is, like, creating turnovers? I mean, so oh. you got to go make plays, right? Oh, absolutely. At the end of the day, that's what it boils down to, making plays. We can talk 
being in the right position all, all we want, but it really boils down to us winning our one-on-one -on -one matchups. And I think as a defensive back as a whole, because we got really good wide receivers to go against, against and tight ends, I think the guys have gotten a lot better at just winning those one-on-one -on -one matchups.